Well, that was quite a treat to have our Minnie Bells and Eli. Welcome everyone to this holy night. We welcome our members and our visitors. As always, we're going to hear the wonderful Christmas story in scripture and in song. And there are many symbols of Christmas that we will see, nativities, poinsettias, candles, and a rose. In some churches, a rose announces a new baby born into a congregation. This rose announces the birth of Jesus. Each Christmas, he is reborn into our hearts. We meet him and greet him and rejoice at the good tidings he brings. Let's offer a prayer together. Gracious God, on this holy night, we gather quietly. We come as shepherds seeking the one true shepherd. We come as servants seeking the King of Kings. What we find is pure love and pure grace. In receiving the Son, we receive you. Help us tonight to remember that Christmas means Christ has come to us and is with us now and forever. Amen. And to get us ready for this holy night, there is a special song that can help us, O Holy Night. So we'll bring that up. And we could listen together. Yeah. 
it is a holy night and now we come to our final wreath lighting so the wreath we have here is just a simple one because the advent wreath is a circular garden of evergreen branches symbolizing eternity each week we have lit a candle and they've represented hope peace joy and love Tonight we light the Christ candle, and by this light we have been led once again to the manger, where our Savior meets us as the Word made flesh. And Tammy will be lighting that, we'll hear her voice, and then we will respond. We light the candle of Christ. Jesus, the light of the world, is coming tonight. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to humankind. Our first hymn that we're going to sing together is, O Come All Ye Faithful. So we'll get that, and we will sing, and I hope you're singing loudly at home when we sing. hope you sang along with that. And now we come to our call to worship. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, 
Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And now we, we have uh, a special anthem. We have two anthems today. That was nice. So this one is our own Cindy with Sleeping Ad and I, which we'll remember uh, from a past cantata, I'm sure. So it takes me a minute to find her, and we will play that. Thank you, Cindy. And now we begin our, our readings. 
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And we'll sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. So find that in your bulletin readings, and we will sing it together. Okay, coming up. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And we will sing while shepherds watched their flocks.
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all people. And we will sing... It came upon a midnight clear. So we'll get you ready for that. I'm going to turn you all the way around. It came upon a midnight clear. I think it's nice when we can sing those many verses because through the years people have forgotten them and they really are special. Well, Christmas is here. It doesn't matter whether our shopping is done or if we mailed our cards on time. Christmas is here. It doesn't matter that our celebrations and gatherings will be smaller this year. Christmas has come. 
And here we are on Christmas Eve sitting at home instead of sitting close to loved ones and friends in church pews. But Christmas has come. Our very young children and very young grandchildren understand it better than we do. They've already written to Santa telling him what they want for Christmas. They've helped trim the tree. They've played with the nativity figures. And tonight they'll go to bed and listen for sleigh bells. And tomorrow morning, after they tear open their presents, they'll wait for Grandma and Grandpa to call perhaps and ask, What did you get for Christmas? It's become the universal question of the season. What did you get for Christmas? And of course, if we're asked, we'll answer just as eagerly. But after we've stacked up the boxes and put away the decorations, the question will still linger. What did you get for Christmas? Or maybe the question is, what did you get out of Christmas? Many people will say, oh, not much. They'll say Christmas had no parties and I couldn't visit friends and I'm frustrated. And they won't be alone in that frustration. I spent last week or so worrying over packages lost in the mail and all the baking I didn't get done. I found myself short-tempered and distracted. But then a few things happened. Unexpected things. Things that seemed totally unconnected at first. First, our son and his fiancée came over one evening and drove us to a nearby street. We made our way past huge houses decorated with lights and wreaths. Our, de our destination was one particular house, famous for its light display. We joined a line of cars that moved past the house to stare at the front lawn, filled with lighted Christmas figures of every kind. There was a Santa on a reindeer, Santa on a helicopter, and penguins with red hats and a train full of toys and the glare was so bright the neighbors had to lower their window shades. It was quite a spectacle, but just before we were ready to drive on, I saw a cluster of figures. There were no flashing lights on this little cluster, only a simple spotlight. It was a nativity scene made up of old chipped statues, probably rescued from a church that had closed. But there in the midst of all those contemporary decorations, that manger scene gave off an unexpected glow. It was an unexpected nativity. The next day, as I scrolled through my email on my phone, waiting through all the Amazon alerts, a notice popped up. It said an e-card was waiting for me to open. It was from Fred, which I found strange since the Palmers had already sent us a beautiful Christmas card. So this e-card was unexpected and its message was too. The short video showed the interior of a barn where a farmer with a lantern saw a shadow cast by ordinary farm implements. The shadow, to the farmer's eyes, was a silhouette of the Holy Family, an unexpected nativity. Well, in the Bible, important messages come in threes, so I began to think that another unexpected nativity might be coming my way. A few days passed, and then as I was going through my Christmas file, I pulled out a card from last year. Why had I saved it? I wondered. I opened it up, and there was a paper cutout of the town of Bethlehem. I saw the buildings, the star, and the magi off to the side. And just as I was closing the card, I remembered why I had saved it. In the very back of the town, under the star, barely visible, only three quarters of an inch high, was a tiny cutout of the stable and manger, an unexpected nativity. Now these wonderful events didn't send me off on a nativity quest. I didn't go around looking for butterflies and bluebirds to pop up nativities to give me signs of what God can do. I'm a practical theologian. My theology is simple and practical. God made the world, Jesus came to show us how to care for one another, and so we should be doing just that. We're here to reflect God's love and pass it on. But Christmas is a special time, and I believe that there can be unexpected nativities all around us to remind us of the wondrous love that was born that holy night. The love that came down to us is not intrusive. God in human flesh came quietly to a far-off place. Lowly shepherds were invited to see him, and they chose to answer the invitation. 
A star, which attracted little attention at the time, beckoned Magi from far off, and they chose to follow it. Each year, each December, we are invited to the manger. We have choices, too. We can count the ways that this Christmas is different from other years. We can complain about our closed church buildings and restrictions, or we can count our blessings. Christmas has come. It's all around us. It's in the eyes of children and the memories of the aging. It's in the song the angels sing and the remembered music of our choirs. It's in the intangible gifts we offer each other. It's in the Christmas hope that we first found at the manger. We're invited to make the journey to Bethlehem every year. And tonight, if we answer the invitation, if we listen with our hearts and seek with our hearts, we'll get something wonderful for Christmas. The trappings of the holidays will follow, fall away and we'll find ourselves standing in his presence, surrounded by his love. And that's my prayer for you, that you find yourself on this holy night right in the midst of an unexpected nativity. Merry Christmas and amen. Well, here's something wonderful and maybe unexpected. Lori has made a wonderful recording with her harp. So I'm going to turn you around and just let you experience. So one minute. Thank you, Lori. Let's have a prayer together as we wind down and, and just allow the peace of the night to come to us. The soft alleluia whispered at the manger echoes through the ages into the beauty of this holy night. May we receive the child as our savior forever with us as the living Christ. May we carry home the hope, peace, joy and love born to us in the holy silence of a starry night. Amen. And now we're going to take a few minutes to gather our candles and our matches and be ready for our singing. And as we gather, we'll just take our time and get everything set up.
And now, I hope you have a candle, and if you don't, we have plenty here, so we'll, we'll put ours all around, and uh, we'll sing Silent Night together. So I'm going to turn you and uh, give you a benediction, and then we can sing together. So T and I will put our candles around. And if you have yours too, we, we can sing together. Here we go. 